Good evening, it's the Black Belt Barrister here, here to talk about the TV licence and to offer up some discussion on views. Now you'll know that on this channel I like to talk about things from both points of view. I don't usually offer my opinions and I usually encourage you to look at both sides of an argument. And indeed, with regards to the TV licence, there are many sides to this argument and many reasons why lots of people think it should be scrapped and lots of reasons why many people think it's good value and it should continue. So I'm going to explore a few of these things and maybe give you something to think about. Ultimately, I'm going to give you some views that may suggest that it should be scrapped and some views that may actually offer up an alternative, which I don't seem to think is being considered broadly enough whenever the issue of TV licensing comes about. And I'm going to explain why I think this is actually being missed and potentially why this is such a hotly debated topic in the first place. Starting with a few broad principles, looking at when you need a TV license, just so that we can recap that, and this will play part in my discussion later on. So first of all, if you are going to watch or record live TV, whichever device that is on, whether it's on your TV, your laptop, your phone, your iPad, um, any Android devices and anything else, if you are watching or recording any live TV, which I'm going to talk about, then you will need a TV license. One of the things to bear in mind, which is set out clearly on the TV licensing website, is that whether you are watching on BBC or ITV Hub, all for YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, Now TV, SkyGo, etc., as the list is shown on TV licensing, which is not necessarily an exhaustive list, and or if you download or watch any BBC programmes on BBC iPlayer, then all of which you need to buy a TV licence. And the TV licensing website does clarify that you only need one TV licence per household, and there are some exceptions that might cover students if they are uh, at university halls only for part of the year, and so on. So lots of the questions arise as to what live TV actually is, and whether a short delay means that it's no longer live, and things of that nature. But as I've said many times, short delays are not going to mean that it isn't live. And this, of course, applies to repeats of programmes as well. So if a show is being broadcasted live, even though it might be a repeat, or it's on one of the plus one channels, or the plus two channels, or even plus 24 channels, if it is being broadcast, then it is live TV for the purposes of the legislation and thus requires a TV license. Many of the questions also relate to whether or not you pay for cable, satellite or other services, whether in those circumstances you need to pay for a TV license. And of course, the position is that you do still need to pay for a TV license if you are watching or recording live TV or downloading and using BBC iPlayer programmes. And as many of you may know or remember, there was a petition submitted to Parliament which got 110,842 signatures. And this was titled, Revoke the TV Licence Using Legislation. This was debated on Parliament on the 1st of March 2021 for about an hour and a half. But the official government response is that the Royal Charter, the BBC Royal Charter, maintains the licence fee funding model until 2027, at which point it's going to be looked at again. So in order to offer up some valid arguments either way, let's look at how the TV licence is spent. Well, according to a BBC website article on the 10th of July 2020, which breaks down the licence fee and how it's spent, at least it would have been accurate at the time it was written. And the source is referenced as the BBC Annual Report for 2018 to 2019. So it would be broadly similar today, but maybe not exact. It says that £6.92 of the licence fee was spent on TV, obviously being for the BBC. £1.24 of the licence fee went to the BBC World Service. 33 pence was spent in licence fee collection. 80 pence for other services and production costs. One pound and eight pence for BBC Online, two pounds 17 for radio. Now the first comment I would have to make is when I watched most, but not all of the parliamentary debate on this subject, a lot of it was focused following letters in from constituents to their relevant MP on the BBC and whether or not the BBC offered value for money and whether or not the BBC should continue, whether it should be continued by way of the license fee, etc. So the primary argument that this flags up to me is that the discussion is usually centred around whether or not the BBC should be receiving these fees, when, in fact, the licence is required if you are watching or recording any live TV, regardless of which TV company broadcasts you might be watching. 
For example, if you get your news from Sky News and you get your sports from Sky Sports and everything else you get from Netflix and YouTube, but not another TV company, then you might rightly be thinking, why should you be paying the license fee when all of it goes to the BBC and you are not using BBC services? So this for me becomes probably the strongest argument. Let's say, for example, that you do watch TV programmes, but on other TV channels and not the BBC whether that might be on your TV or on YouTube or wherever, then the legislation requires you to pay for the TV license and you know that the TV license goes to the BBC. That for me is a little bit like having to pay for a supermarket license fee when all of the fees go to one particular supermarket because it has a royal charter when you only shop at a different store. So just to restate that argument, if you are only watching or recording TV programmes from any other TV company, but not the BBC, then it is potentially a fundamentally flawed requirement for you to pay a licence fee to which there are criminal penalties attached if you do not pay it and you are found to be watching those services, even though those fees go to another TV company which you do not watch. So instead of me offering up arguments as to whether the BBC is value for money or not, surely the real argument is that if people did want to use BBC services, that they would be paying for it and choose to pay for it. The BBC itself reports that around 7% of people who need a licence do not have one. But I presume that when it says people, it actually refers to households because in the BBC Television Licence Fee Trust Statement for the year ending the 31st of March 2019, the section on licence fee evasion states, and I quote, licence fee evasion is measured as the difference between licences in force and the number of licensable places. Licences in force are identified from the TV licensing database, and the number of licensable places is estimated from statistical sources. Licensable places are made up of households and other non-domestic places requiring a TV licence. In other words, according to the wording of this document, there are only around 7% of licensable places, that is a place that may require a TV licence, that don't have one, meaning the vast majority of places do. But the real question, therefore, might well be how many of those places that do have a TV licence actually use any BBC service? Now, the fact of the matter might well be that the vast majority of them do, or indeed all of those licensed places do use BBC services, and then the argument could well be that it is a perfectly valid fee, and many people argue is good value for money. As I said, I'm not going to make any arguments as to whether or not it is value for money or not. I think that is an entirely subjective opinion, but the argument that I would make is if one individual person or household is making an argument that the BBC is not value for money, then that household should have the choice as to whether or not they pay for the services or not. Equally, if you pay for Netflix and you decide that the programming quality has gone downhill and then you choose not to pay it, then of course you won't continue to pay for it. It is not possible, however, to apply the same reasoning to the TV licence because the TV licence fee is not shared among all of the TV companies that broadcast live shows and you are required to pay it even if you only watch one of them and that one of them is not the BBC. If, on the other hand, you do use BBC services or the fee was shared among all of the TV companies, then the current fee of £159 divided into an annual fee is only £13.25 per month. Which, of course, when you compare it with Netflix, is a very similar price. Although, if you only go with the basic version of Netflix, this is not a sponsored video, I'm comparing the fees, the basic service for Netflix is only £5.99. So less than half of the fee for the TV licence. The second fairly broad argument I have to make is that non-payment of a TV licence where it is required is still a criminal offence and you can face up to a thousand pounds fine. You can't face imprisonment for non-payment of the TV licence fee, but you can face imprisonment for non-payment of a fine, but more on that in one of my earlier videos. The issue that I have with this, and I'd be interested in your comments down below, and I might even put a poll on my community section, so check out for that, is that I believe, and this is a personal belief which is not substantiated by any facts and figures as yet, but I believe that a lot of people will be paying for the TV licence out of a genuine fear 
that they will be prosecuted and criminalised if they don't have one and then they are investigated and the decision and the prosecution is made that they should have had one and they end up with a criminal conviction. Now, of course, if a person is being prosecuted for contravention of the legislation, that should be a matter for court. But as it is still a criminal matter as it stands, the burden of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt. So in theory, the only way a person should be successfully prosecuted for this offence is if it is proven beyond a reasonable doubt that that person was watching or recording live TV or using BBC iPlayer to download programmes in the same way. So my real concern here is the number of people that are going to plead guilty to the offence of not paying for a TV licence when they need one, when in fact they may not actually use any live TV services at all and therefore are only pleading guilty out of fear that they will receive a higher penalty if they don't. Again, I'd be interested in your comments in the box below. But coming back to the burden of proof argument for a moment, it must be proven for you to be guilty of this offence that you have been watching or recording live TV services, whether or not that is through the BBC, other TV companies, or indeed BBC iPlayer. Now, of course, if there is a warrant issued for your premises and your premises is searched and there is evidence that you have been watching live TV or recording live TV, then of course, under the current legislation, that would result in a conviction. And of course, if any evidence is obtained, it must be disclosed to you at the point of charge, or at least before you appear in court. And you may very well want to question the validity of the evidence, the strength of the evidence, or indeed whether any evidence exists at all, that you are guilty of this offence. The difficulty here, of course, is that if you want to pay for representation, it may quickly become very expensive and it might be cheaper to pay the fine or indeed the licence in the first place, whether you need one or not. So in summary, I think there are a number of arguments to make here. First of all, if the TV licence fee is not going to all of the other TV companies and those are the ones you use, you may well feel that that's unfair to pay for something which doesn't go to the company you're using. Therefore, you might feel it would be fairer if it was a subscription service akin to Netflix, albeit on the upper end of the Netflix fee structure. And again, regarding the arguments of prosecution, a lot of people may feel that people are paying for the TV licence out of fear of prosecution, and then perhaps pleading guilty out of fear of receiving a higher fine. All the while, there might be a very valid argument for countering such a charge for this offence if there isn't any or sufficient evidence to sustain a conviction. By way of contrast, I'm sure that most people watching wouldn't plead guilty to a charge of theft just because you fear a higher penalty if you don't. And I would certainly like to think that you would challenge the quality of the evidence that the prosecutor brings forward. So those are my views on the TV licence and whether or not it should be abandoned. I hope you found the discussion useful. Please give the video a thumbs up and remember, stay humble and subscribe.